I think it's pretty safe to say that a porta band is probably one of my favorite tools in the shop, especially once they came out with cordless versions. There's a lot of blade brands available for these things, and I've found that some of them aren't quite as good as the others. So I chose five of the most common ones I could get. We're going to test them, and we're going to see which ones are the best. For all our testing, we're going to be using this fixture. This will allow us to have consistent pressure and will be hands off during all the cutting. All the blades we'll be testing today are 1418 variable tooth. I've rigged up a weight on the end of our fixture here. We also have the strut that we're countering, but this puts down about 40 ounces on the pulley there where it hits the scale. And then I have a weight that we can add to it that'll make it 90 ounces. And that will all come into play as we get going on the testing. I have our saw here. I have it square, square to the, to the backstop this way. And I have our sweep so that it is straight up and down this way with as minimal run out as I could possibly get in it. Um, it's actually pretty good. So this is going to be 100% reliant on that blade cutting straight. Obviously the blade can flex. If the blade has irregularities in the teeth or whatever, it will turn and we will be left with a piece that is not cut square. First blade up is the DeWalt. It is the cheapest of the group. Believe it or not, it is $19.99 for three. DeWalt is made in the USA. And it also says it has 8% cobalt. So for the first cut, we're doing this at the light pressure, 40 ounces. Then we uh, will mark down the time, how long it took to do the cut. Then we will do 10 cuts with heavier pressure and then another light cut and measure the time and see the difference. Appears to be a fairly clean cut. Stayed very square that direction. And it is pretty square that direction. It's actually about perfect. And now we're doing our 10 additional cuts. And this hat, I added another 50 ounces to this. So it's a total of 90 ounces on the saw doing these cuts. And this is the 10th cut. We're gonna, I timed this one so that we can kind of compare all the blades with the time with a little bit of weight on them. Let's check to see how square it was with our additional weight. See if we're losing anything. So we're slightly out of square in that direction. And really out of square in that direction. So now we're back to the light pressure again. So this is 40 ounces of blade pressure or thereabouts. Uh, obviously that's all very r rough estimates. But now we're going to see how long this cut takes in comparison to the first one. And then we will also see if the blade is still cutting square with light pressure. It was pretty square before, and we'll see if it's still square now. All right, 317 is what it took to cut that this time. Um, it was 243 before, so that's a difference of 34 seconds. So it took an additional 34 seconds after having 10 cuts under its belt. The tube stayed fairly square, but it's not as square as it was uh, at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and score this an 8. It was a 10 before, um, and now it's an 8. So it lost a little bit of straightness in its cut as well. All right, and next, before we take this blade off, after all that abuse, we're going to do something a little bit inappropriate with it, and that's cutting a pin that came out of my backhoe that uh, is a fairly hard pin. It's not hardened, but it's probably like a 1040 or something like that. It's, it's decently hard, uh, but it's definitely more material than this blade is rated to handle um, as far as thickness. So we're going to see if this thing can cut it or if it's going to ruin the blade or what. So we're going to give it two minutes uh, to cut, and then we'll measure all the depths of each blade, cutting two minutes. And this is a used blade after all the abuse we've already given it. Someone forgot to do a close-up of the cut that this thing ends up making, um, but I will show you that uh, after the next blade, um, we'll compare the two. But the overall depth of this cut was only one millimeter. All right, and here's a close-up of the DeWalt blade. It has noticeable wear. It is dulled over pretty good. The next blade we'll be testing will be the Morse. It's $20.99 for three blades. It claims it's cobalt, but it does not specify how much cobalt is in here. Um, it is also 
made in the USA. All right, and here's the cut with 40 ounces of weight. Minute 36, that's pretty impressive. That's a lot faster. That's almost a minute faster than the uh, DeWalt. And it's just as square as the DeWalt. Uh, it's a 10, 10 out of 10. Now for our 10 cuts with the additional weight. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, the last cut took 29 seconds. So that's pretty impressive as well. Now let's see how square it is. So the first thing I check is the top side there, and that's that stayed pretty squared, so that's pretty good. And then the vertical cut is about equivalent to the DeWalt. It cut a little bit in towards the clamp, so I'm starting to see a pattern here. And now for our light pressure 40 ounce cut, our final one. Minute 59, that's 23 seconds slower than the original, so not too bad. So of course I'm measuring this one backwards, so I'm doing the vertical part first, and it again cut in towards the clamp a little bit, and this is with light pressure. Um, it's a little bit worse than the DeWalt, but not too much worse. And then the horizontal section is fairly square, but there is just a tiny bit of play there. And now to see what does more damage, the blade or the pin. So we'll give it two minutes to cut on here. There's two minutes. And it did quite a bit better than the DeWalt. It got about three millimeters in. I'll show you at the end of the video how I measured those. And after all the abuse, this blade, it doesn't look as bad as the DeWalt, but it definitely shows some wear. But it also looks like it could still cut some stuff. So I'll have to figure out how to rate that. Next blade up, 2198 for three is iMachinist bandsaw blades. This is the only blades in the group that is also rated for stainless steel. It is made in China. Does not mention anything about the content of cobalt, so I imagine it doesn't, but it does say it's a bimetal M42 grade. Okay, so that was miserably long, uh, 1453, and I actually helped it at the end. This this blade doesn't like to cut without uh, pressure on it, um, and it's not perfectly square either. Um, it's not square. That's the flat, the horizontal surface, and then vertically, it actually fades away the opposite of the other two blades. So I'm going to go ahead and give that uh, probably a seven out of ten. And now for our cuts with the additional weight. Forty-eight seconds on that one, so that's a little slower. Let's see how it did. And it's not good. It's it's fading away just like just like it did with the minimal weight. It's still about a seven out of ten. It's usable, but it's not it's not perfect by any means. And now, I, reluctantly, I'm trying the cut with just the forty ounces on it. And as suspected, it, it just doesn't do it. So I just went ahead and helped it through. And then we'll go ahead and measure it, um, even though that's not accurate. It changed nothing. It's still about a 7 out of 10. It, it consistently cuts inconsistent. Now we'll set up our pin and see if this thing can do anything to that. I don't know if you guys are as shocked as I am. <laughs> that thing made... Just about as fast a progress on that pin as it does on that tubing. Uh, that is very impressive. There must be something different about that tooth profile. We're going to have to investigate that. And here's the blade after all the abuse. And it actually looks really good. Um, it, it has very little wear, if any. Next up for one penny more are these Fox BC blades. There is no information on the packaging about anything. So one can only assume they're made in China, but I'm only assuming that. We'll see how they do.
2 minutes 36, so a hell of a lot better than the 15 of the one before. Is it square? It's pretty decent that way, um, and not perfect that way. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 7 out of 10. And now for our 10 cuts with the additional weight. Nope. 46 seconds is what those were taken. You can see how square it was with the weight. And it's not great. So uh, that's about equivalent to the DeWalt was with the additional weight. So we'll give that a 2 out of 10, just like the DeWalt. Now we'll set up our cut without, without the additional weight. See how it does on time versus the beginning. 3 minutes 30. So that is a uh, 1 minute, almost a full minute additional time after our abuse. All right, and that actually is more square now than it was when we first uh, started. So we're going to give that an 8 out of 10. All right, so now for the two minutes on the hardened pin, we'll see what this thing can do to it. Not bad. Not Definitely not the worst. Six millimeters or about a quarter inch. And now we'll take a look at this blade. Um, it's... Not the worst. Um, it's actually probably in second place as of right now, right behind the iMachinist. Then the last and most expensive blade we'll be testing for $24.98 is the Lenox brand. It is made in the USA with global materials, it says. It's long-lasting bimetal technology. Does not specify whether there's cobalt in here or not. But we'll see how it does. And no, the video didn't freeze. That's the saw not doing anything. Okay, we are literally not even moving. I, don't, I was thinking maybe the saw was stuck, but it's not. We just have a blade that doesn't want to cut with no pressure. It's still very sharp. It just doesn't have enough bite to, to get it to pull through. So this may be similar to our iMachinist blade. Failure to complete on the no weight, so I guess we'll add some weight. All right, a little out of sequence, but uh, 47 seconds once I added the weight to make the first cut. And now we'll see how square it is. It is not, not great. <laughs> so um, it's... It's off in both ways. Um, th this way right here was the horizontal cut like that. Um, and then the other way, it had a bunch of curve that went in towards the clamp. Now we'll just do our 10 cuts and then we'll go from there. Okay, so before we give it another shot at its low pressure, let's check how square it is. And again, it's, I think, worse than it was at the beginning. It's pretty far off. Pretty good that way. But the, the blade definitely wanders. making sure it, <laughs> it just seems seems so weird you think it's not actually pushing down but. okay so again it failed to cut with light pressure now let's add some weight and we'll see what kind of damage we can do to the pin Well, the good news is it didn't do the worst on the pen. Um, it's in second to last place, 1.3 millimeter or 50 thousandths. 
Well, and after all the abuse, it didn't fare too well either. The teeth are pretty rounded off on this thing. About as bad as the Dewalt. And here is the pen, all the damage on the pen. Now let's take a look at a spreadsheet with all the information put on it. And we'll see which blade came out on top. And here's the little spreadsheet I made that has all the information I gathered while doing all our sample cuts. Uh, if you're looking for the cheapest, uh, the DeWalt ends up being a lucky number 666 per blade. And speaking of DeWalt being the cheapest, it also is the straightest cutting low pressure blade of the group. The longest lasting is definitely going to be the iMachinist, but the cut quality isn't the best on the square tube, but it did really well on that pin. The Lennox belt blade, it was an all-out disappointment, but I kind of knew that going into this. I've never had good luck with those blades. The straightest cutting blade of the group is the DeWalt with light pressure, and then with heavier pressure, it would be the Eye Machinist, which is a good thing because it didn't cut very good without pressure. Then the smoothest cutting blade of the group, as far as how much the saw bounced, would be the Eye Machinist as well. Now that we got that all taken care of, let's get to the fun stuff. So on top here is the Morse blade, on the bottom is the Eye Machinist blade. I want to know why the Morse, the best light pressure cutting blade of the group, cut better than the, than the Eye Machinist blade at light pressure. Um, a lot better. I didn't see too much difference in that view, so let's look at this view. And in this view, I can see a difference. The upper blade here is the Eye Machinist, the lower blade is the Morse. So if you're like me, you would say, the upper blade looks like it would cut better at low pressure than the lower blade. Um, but that's not what our testing proved. Um, and now the question arises, why? Uh, so if you have an idea, let me know in the comments below. Because I honestly am out of ideas. I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot wrap my head around why that Morse blade, the bottom blade there, would cut better at light pressure than that upper blade, the eye machinist blade. So if it were you, which blade do you think is the best? I still like the Morse. So this didn't really win in any competition, but this has been my go-to blade for a long time. And uh, I think it did actually pretty well, kind of just across the board. However, I am very curious about these Eye Machinist blades. I've never used these before, and uh, I'm blown away at how well that thing did cutting that pin. And I believe that if I were using this by hand, which is generally how I use a porta band, I don't I usually use them in a fixture like that. Um, if I were doing this by hand, I believe I could get this blade to cut fairly straight. Um, and it may last a really long time, because keep in mind, this blade has very little wear on it after all that testing we did, which was a lot better than all the others. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, let me know if there's a tool testing video you have an idea for, or if there's something I may have missed on this that uh, maybe I can address in some shorts. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one.